five facts about R32 refrigerant. In this video, I want to set the record straight on a few things. There's some misconceptions out there. There's some misinformation. I'm hoping to maybe set your mind at ease on a few things when it comes to R32. No one is paying me to do this video. We have been sponsored on our channel by Daikin, and Daikin is one of the companies that are going to be using R32 in this country, but no one's paid me to do this video. I will say, though, if you want to get more information apart from this video, go to R32. 32 reasons.com and that's a good resource to get more information on r32 and it is a daikin website so again daikin has not paid me to do this video but i think that there's just so much information being thrown around out there i want to set the record straight so let's dive into it five facts on r32 refrigerant the first one is that r32 refrigerant is not new it's new to us it's new to us here in this country but it's not a new refrigerant you can google it it's been used for decades in other countries countries. It's continuing to be used in other countries. And it might be new to us here in this country for a number of reasons, but it's not new. And in fact, it's really not that new to us. I'll talk more about why that is in just a moment. It's been used in over 130 countries, put in over 230 million units worldwide. So it's been used, it's been around, it's proven. And again, it's not new. They know what they're working with here. Number two, R32 is a single compound refrigerant, but it is a part of a lot of other blends. It's actually in a lot of those other refrigerants. So believe it or not, it's in 410A refrigerant, the refrigerant that we've been using for over two decades here in this country, R32 is in it. And that's why I said it's actually not that new to us in this country. We've just never used it in its pure form because 410A was invented. What they did was they took R32, which is an A2L refrigerant. It's mildly flammable. It's not super flammable. It's just mildly flammable. And Use some R32 and I will try to ignite it. And as you can see, nothing really happens. They added 125 to it, which is a really good flame retardant. It's a horrible refrigerant, very high GWP, very low performing, but it's got a boiling point that's close to R32 and it's a good flame retardant. So 410A is a blend of R32 and 125. R32 is also a part of 454B, which is another refrigerant we're seeing put into a lot of systems now. 454B is almost 70% R32. It's actually a makeup of just under 70% R32. 32 and just over 30% 1234YF. So it's in a bunch of other refrigerants, a bunch of other blends, including the ones that we all know, love them or hate them. Fact number three, R32 cannot be put in an A1 system. So if you've got a heating and air system and all the refrigerant leaks out, if it's a 410A system, you cannot go back and put R32 in that system. Part of the reason for that is moving forward, a lot of the equipment with these A2O refrigerants in them are going to have measures in place and equipment in place so that that system will go into a mitigation mode if the refrigerant is actually leaking. So it's got a sensor in there. It's going to have possibly some other hardware, maybe another control board that forces that system into a hard lockout and it goes into mitigation mode, blowing fresh air through that system. So we don't have concentrated pools of refrigerant that is an A2L mildly flammable refrigerant. So just because 410A has R32 in it doesn't mean you can go to an A1 system, a 410A system that has leaked all that refrigerant out and now put R32 in there. I got the question the other day in one of my classes, well, what happens if I do? I don't know because you're not supposed to do it and I've never done it. So ultimately you are breaking the law if you do put that in there. It doesn't have the A2L sensors in there. The EPA has not approved you to put that in there and you would be breaking a law if you did put R32 or any other A2L refrigerant in an A1 system. Number four, R32 does not contain propane. And that's one of the things I hear all the time. I had an old timer in one of my classes the other day. He was raising heck. Ah, you know, I can't believe we're going to a refrigerant that's got propane in it. It does not have propane in there. That's not what makes it mildly flammable. So that is one of the things I'm hearing a lot. In fact, if you Google the phrase, is there propane in R32, Google's AI program will actually say yes. But the way it's coming to that answer is it's actually pulling information from another website that 
has a product that you can replace R32 in certain systems, but it's pulling that information from that other website that it's a product that does have propane in there. So if you were to Google that, that is misinformation. I would challenge you to maybe reword it in a different way. If you just literally Google, does R32 contain propane? And my answer that popped up is no, R32 does not contain propane. It's actually a chemical called difluoromethane, and it is mildly flammable. As I said, it's a single compound refrigerant. It's colorless, odorless, and being mildly flammable, it's several times less flammable than propane and cannot be ignited by static electricity or sparks from light switches. Ultimately, it is mildly flammable. I would challenge you. There's other videos out there you can watch where guys are literally trying to set it on fire. Some of them do get it to ignite under certain perfect situations. It's got to be, you know, a certain amount of refrigerant and have a certain amount of velocity, a certain amount of oxygen and a certain amount of ignition source. I've actually seen videos of guys blowing flames out with the R32 refrigerant. Voila, candle is burning. I will take some R32 again. And I will try to ignite it. Oh. And then finally, number five, fact during the recording of this video, R32 is not going away, at least not anytime soon. It's another thing we keep hearing being thrown around in our industry. Oh, well, it's going away in a couple years. Now, obviously I'm no psychic, but I will say this. Number one, the EPA is not going to lower the GWP until we come out with some better options. Right now, a lot of the other options, including 454B, have some big concerns in our industry. Things like PFAs being in some of these refrigerants. Things like the refrigerant might have a lower GWP, but it has a higher LCCP, a higher life cycle climate performance, meaning it's actually not better for the environment, even though it has a lower GWP. It doesn't perform as well. It's not as efficient. It takes more of it to meet the same capacities. And I've said in other videos, if we ever do see the EPA lower the GWP to 500 and 454B being our only option, being a proprietary refrigerant with a higher LCCP than R32, I would wonder if someone got paid, right? I would wonder if some crooked politician got paid because they were able to lower the GWP to 500 and only offer 454B in our country as an option. We'll see what happens as far as that goes. Hopefully this video helps. Hopefully it eases your mind a little bit and also sets the record straight on some misinformation out there. So let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. Leave me a comment down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about reusing ductwork when replacing a system and where a lot of people make mistakes. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.